Hello and welcome to this Haas tip of the day. Now, have you ever walked through your shop, looked up at the tool carousel on one of your mills and seen something like this? This is not good. This can cause all kinds of problems. And that's what we're gonna show you today. We're gonna show you how you can get rid of the stringy chips on your tools. So we've got a tool that's got chips wrapped around it. How big of a deal can that be? Well, it can be awful. If we do a tool change with a tool in the spindle that's got chips wrapped around it, those chips could get caught up in the tool change arm and cause a fault. Worse than that, if those chips catch a hold of my probe in the tool carousel, we could have problems with that as well. Also, if we have a big ball of chips wrapped around our tool, those act like a force field keeping all the coolant away from our cutting edge. Our tool is gonna to wear out prematurely, or worse than that, it can break because it's running dry. On top of this, we've all had parts that ended up with great big swirl marks across the face as those chips dried across the surface. This isn't good either. Okay, we understand what the problem is and we know we've gotta fix it. Now, I would usually start with my feed rate. Increase that feed rate, try and get those chips to break. Next, make sure that you're using the right can cycle. Use a G73 or a G83 can cycle to peck drill, try and break those chips that way. Next, make sure that your coolant nozzles are adjusted just right to knock those chips off and out of the way. Finally, if you're still having problems, talk to your tooling supplier. Make sure that you're using the right tool for the job. Now, a lot of us are working in job shops and we just don't have the, the time to wait for new tools. What do we do then? Well, we're gonna program our way out of this problem. Now we've created a simple part and drilled a series of holes. We then came in with a right-hand helix end mill, plunging to create some counterbores. Now this created all kinds of stringy chips. Those chips got stuck around our tool holder one at a time until they built up into that rat's nest. What we're suggesting is that we actually reverse the spindle direction between each hole. This is gonna spin off those chips before they have a chance to build up. Now we can program this manually. All we've got to do is reverse our spindle after we've drilled our hole. Then we dwell, giving the tool enough time to throw those chips out of the way. Now if you're doing this, make sure that your clearance plane is far enough off the part that the chips have room to escape. Now we program this manually. If you do it this way, you've got to add that spindle reversal and the dwell after each and every hole. If we've got the latest version of software on a next-gen control, all of this can be done for us automatically. All we have to do is add an E value to our drilling or tapping can cycles. I'm gonna add an E2000. What this is gonna do is stop, reverse the spindle at 2000 RPMs in between each and every hole so those chips never have a chance to build up. Normally, that spindle reversal is enough to throw the chips from your tool. Now, if you'd like to give those chips some more time to escape, all you've got to do is make a change to setting 306 on your next generation control. With this change, your tool is going to dwell for this minimum chip clear time in seconds before moving on to the next hole. Well, we've given you another tool for your toolbox. If you ever end up with chips wrapped around your tool, reverse the spindle or if you've got a next-gen control, just add an E value to your can cycle and the machine will do it for you. That's it, and thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.